College. And my name is Jill Cardinal. I'm one of the counselors here as well as the campus event coordinator. I'm joined today by Lee, our Dean of Admission and Hannah, Admission Counselor. And we're gonna take you through the process today and give you more information about Ripon College that you can take back with you. Um, to start off with, I'm going to do a little poll with a couple of questions just to kind of get uh, some feedback from you and why you're on the call today. So feel free to answer the poll. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the first question. And this is, what are you most interested or excited about for college? You wanna select your answer there. And a few more of you to choose an answer and we'll take that to the next question. Okay, I can I close it. <laughs> All right, so the results we have most excited meeting new people and athletics. So that is great. Some things about Ripon that you will learn that uh, we're a small ca campus community and we definitely have a lot of athletes on campus. So the next question will be, let's see once. I can get my stop share results. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next question. And this one is, if you know what area are you thinking about majoring in? Go ahead and answer that. All right, I'm gonna end the polling on that one and share results. So it looks like some of you are 100% sure, which is great. And as we go through, you'll learn more about being undecided. We have a different term for that. I'll let Lee share that a little bit later. And then finally, we have one more question. Let's see once, I'm gonna go to polling three. And this is just a fun question, a Netflix question. What's your obsession these days with Netflix? I know we probably have a lot, watched a lot of Netflix. All right, I'm gonna, and the polling there and results. It looks like Umbrella Academy, a couple of you. I don't know if that's any good, so I'd love to hear what that's all about. All right, so I'm gonna stop that polling. We're good there. Thank you for participating, just to kind of get things warmed up. And now I will turn things over to our Dean of Admission, Lee Melagic. Thanks, Jill. I'm yep. gonna share my screen with everyone. I need technology to work with me here for a second. <laughs> All right, can everybody see the first slide? If you can't, put something in chat so we know. I think we're good to go. All right, well, thanks everyone for taking the time today. As Jill said, my name is Lee Melegic. I'm our Dean of Admission here at Ripon College. And this is, I'm just beginning my 19th year here on campus. Uh, I wanna take a little bit of time today to uh, just talk a little bit more about Ripon in general. Uh, we have a small group, so this can really be about you. And we'll utilize the chat function in terms of what questions you have. I have a short presentation put together that will talk a little bit about Ripon in general. And we'll also talk about the application process. Um, but really, I want this conversation to be 
uh, interactive and it can really go in any direction that you're most curious to go in. So Hannah's gonna help to facilitate um, any questions that come in, but um, please don't hesitate to ask as we're going through slides. I'm happy to, to jump in anywhere and um, answer any questions that you may have about anything. So before we really jump into the application itself, I just wanted to run through some quick facts about Ripon College and some of the highlights to get us started. So we have 800 students on campus. Uh, I think you probably all know already that we're a small campus that really focuses on relationships um, between students and faculty, students and staff, students and coaches. It's something that we're all about. So we have a very intentionally sized learning community of 800 students. We're strictly undergrad. 100% um, of our coursework is undergrad. All of our classes are taught by full faculty and it's really a benefit for our students because there's not that buffer in between our faculty and um, having graduate student, students in between our faculty and our undergrads. When our students are leaving campus, um, they've worked with faculty, they've done research with faculty, really at a, at a graduate level because of the interactions that they're able to have. So that's something that we certainly highlight as part of our academic experience is the fact that we are strictly undergrad. We have about uh, right around two thirds of our students are from Wisconsin. Uh, the other third literally come from across the US. Um, so we have students um, that come from in this current um, entering first year class that just came to campus uh, this past weekend. Uh, we had over 20 states represented and the same was the case for the class before that too. So uh, a wide variety of states and locations um, and some students that are coming to us internationally as well. In terms of diversity and students of color on campus, we have about of the total enrollment, about 17% of our campus is diverse. Um, we do have a Center for Diversity and Inclusion on campus that all of our students do take, um, do take the opportunity to take advantage of. Uh, we have a number of uh, D3 athletes. Um, over 40% of our students on campus are a part of D3 athletics. So it's part of uh, who we are as a campus. Uh, the building behind me, as you can kind of see, is our recently renovated Wilmore Center, um, which was a $23 million renovation two years ago on campus. So it's something that we've invested uh, for our students that are varsity athletes, but also for our students that just like to stay active um, outside of varsity athletics too. A very active group on campus um, with intramural sports. Um, the center itself is very much focused on health and wellness and something that our students really participated in too. Um, roughly about 40% of our students are involved with Greek life on campus. Um, outside of athletics, students have a very active campus life, which really plays into the residential aspect of campus. Over 90% of our students live on campus all four years. Um, and that's really a main component to the experience on campus. Part of the philosophy here is obviously academics comes first. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about academics here in a few minutes. But the other part of it, and really the other half of the learning that takes place on campus takes place outside of the classroom. It takes place by being involved in different organizations on campus. We have over 50 different student organizations overall. So students get involved with that. They take on leadership roles um, because of the size of our campus and because of the size of our organizations. Students have the opportunity to do that very early in their college careers. And that's something that as they look back on and as they look at building their resume, they really appreciate. They appreciate those opportunities outside of the classroom that um, they're able to take advantage of on campus. Um, one last quick stat I'll throw at you, the first year retention rate is consistently over 80% on campus. Um, and that's a number that we're very proud of. I think national averages, last I saw for private colleges, is somewhere right around 70%. And what that first year retention rate is, those first year students that come back then for their second year on campus. Um, with being over 80%, we like, to find, we like to think that we're finding the students that have found Ripon to be the right fit overall, and then are coming back and coming, are satisfied with their experience, coming back for their second year, and then we do guarantee that our students graduate in four years. So we do have a four-year graduation guarantee for all of our students that come with us and stick with us overall. 
So with that, I talked about a little bit about academics. We have over 33 different majors on campus and as well as 39 minors, um, a number of different pre-professional programs across campus. Those are some of our popu most popular. Um, some of our most popular majors um, include majors in the sciences that also encompass our pre-health professions. So a lot of students that are interested in um, pre-med, um, that are interested in pre-vet, uh, things like that. Um, business is very popular on campus, education, exercise science. Um, personally, I was a psychology major a number of years ago, so I'm a little partial to, to psychology itself. Um, that's one of our most more popular majors on campus. Um, and then pre-law is another area that uh, we have a lot of students that, that has, have an interest in. I mentioned the student to faculty relationships. That's really happens when we, because of our 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So having the small classes, um, no teaching assistance, no grad assistance on campus at all. Um, our students are working directly with our faculty. We also have direct entry programs. So as students are looking at beginning the majors, about half of you on the, on the um, meeting today know what you wanna get into, you can start with those programs, those majors right away when you get on campus. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait two years to do your general education requirements and then apply to get into that school or, or another school or to get into that major itself. It's a direct entry program. Um, so all of our students are starting from day one with their majors. It's also really easy to double major or minor on campus or have multiple minors. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about catalysts in our general curriculum here in, in just one second. For students that don't have a major, for those couple that aren't really sure, that's not a problem at all. Um, about half of our students that end up coming to Ripon either change their mind on their intended major or we call them multi-interested. They were undecided. They didn't know what they necessarily wanted to major in anyways, um, which is absolutely fine. We have, uh, really you have up until the end of your sophomore year when you're scheduling classes for your junior year to be able to kind of figure out what that major might be or what those multiple majors might be. Um, we have a number of students that don't have any problems graduating in four years with having multiple majors or minors while they're on campus. And that is in large part due to our Catalyst curriculum. So with Catalyst, um, there's two major components to Catalyst overall. And I'm actually gonna start on the right-hand side of the slide and then work to the left. So the first major component is that there's a ton of freedom within Catalyst. If you look at the pie chart there, typically at pretty much any four-year college, it takes about 124 credits to graduate. So that's your total pie, um, that 124 credits. Pretty much every school you're going to look at is going to have roughly around 40-some credits uh, for a major. And then usually about half that pie is what you spend doing your gen eds. Your first two years on campus, you're doing your general education requirements. That then leaves the little red slice of the pie actually courses that you want to take at most schools. So at Ripon, we flip that upside down. You still have your major. The red slice of this pie is what's required on campus. It's five courses over your first six semesters on campus. That's it. That's all that's required, which then leaves this other half, leaves this other half available for you to take classes that you want to take. It makes it really easy to do a double major, as you can see, really easy to do a major and a couple minors because those credits are all free to you. Um, free to you take the classes that are most interesting to you. For students that are multi-interested or that are undecided, my biggest advice to you is just to start with classes that sound interesting. If you start, start with classes that sound interesting, um, there's plenty of time to explore and you're gonna find that major and. From there, faculty and the relationships you build on campus are going to help you to figure out which path you want to take after that major. The other piece to it, the second piece to Catalyst, and probably just as important, is that there's really a focus on developing professional skills. So in the first half, you really get a lot of the freedom that students like to have within the curriculum. 
And the second half is really developing professional skills, skills that employers and graduate schools are looking for overall. So as you go through Catalyst, if you look at this little funnel, um, at the top you have Catalyst 110 and Catalyst 120, writing and quantitative reasoning. Those are the first two courses that students take in their first year on campus. Um, writing is the main kind of core um, skill set that they're focusing on, quantitative reasoning is the second. So it's not necessarily an English 110 course. Like the Catalyst 110 course that I typically pick on is um, Beyonce, Black Feminism, and Pop Culture. That's your 110 writing course. So it doesn't necessarily have to be English 110. Your quantitative reasoning course isn't your college math 101 type of course. Um, I know every year they do one on uh, our politics and government professor and a math professor. They co-teach one on um, elections and ballots and things like that. So they can be in different areas. They're very interdisciplinary and they're very contemporary. So students can take courses in these five different areas, which then lead to our Applied Innovation Seminar, which is our Catalyst 300. That course, hey. yes. Could you explain how AP credits transfer into yes. Catalyst or if they do? Absolutely, a great question. So for AP credits, for students that take AP, if, they're, if they test and they test a three, four, or five, those will come in for credits towards that 124 it takes to graduate. So for any AP classes, and then for some students, they may have the opportunity to take college level coursework in high school. So whether it be at a local community college or um, through different types of youth options, courses will also transfer in. Um, they do it on a course by course basis and those courses will come in for credit as well. A common one is like an introductory English course. That course will still transfer in for credit at Ripon um, and it'll be credits that go towards graduation and they'll also fulfill a prerequisite for anything in the English department then too. So yeah, please feel but free. They, but they don't transfer into Catalyst, correct? Correct, correct. The, the Catalyst courses with the courses they were designed, they're, they're all newly designed courses. So Catalyst is about five years old on campus now. And the coursework within them is completely redesigned. So it's not courses that they picked out of the curriculum prior to Catalyst becoming our general education requirements. It's coursework that um, students is new for Catalyst specifically. If a student were to look at transferring into Ripon, um, what they may do is take uh, like a written communication course and a public speaking course and use those two to um, supplement Catalyst 110. So it becomes a little bit different for a transfer student, um, but for a typical student coming in in their first year, you know, it, the credits will go towards graduation, but with only five courses being required, they don't go towards Catalyst. Um, just hopping back to Catalyst 300, it's kind of the culmination. Uh, just to give you an idea, what they're really trying to do with Catalyst 300 is it's really trying to simulate the professional work world. They put students in groups of five or six. They give them a real kind of big world type of question. There's no right or wrong answer, and they tell the students to go. They have the entire semester to come up with the solution to the problem that they're faced with. They have a faculty mentor that they can work with um, that doesn't necessarily have a right or wrong answer either, uh, but somebody that they can really bounce ideas off of and work with in terms of formulating a plan um, to answer this question. And then at the end of the semester, they have to give a presentation to the campus community. The entire group uh, gets up in front and provides their answer to the, the campus community. So Calus becomes kind of a big uh, Catalyst Day on campus where that all takes place. So really what Catalyst is focusing on is a ton of freedom for the students to take classes that they want, which they're then going to help to develop the professional skill sets, the problem solving, the communication, and probably most importantly, the collaboration skills that employers and graduate schools are looking for specifically. So I want to take a 
pause here, Hannah, for a second and answer any questions that they that there may be floating out there prior to hopping kind of into the admission application itself. That was the only one right now. So feel free to proceed on. Proceed on, okay. I know you must all be saving your application, your great questions for the end. So that's okay, we'll, we'll tackle them at the end. Um, that's not a problem at all. So for the application, I wanna run through just kind of a timeline, some helpful tips. And again, we'll um, certainly happy to answer questions as we move forward here. Um, one of the biggest things with the timeline is we're not gonna let you forget anything. Um, We'll lay out a timeline today, but we'll definitely keep you updated throughout the process um, via email and texts and phone calls and all that to let you know of important dates coming up. The admission application for us is now open. So our own ribbon application is available and then the common application is also available. So we've started to begin to receive applications. Um, as you'll see as when we go through the process of the requirements, we don't put a lot of hurdles in front of our students when you look at applying. Um, really, it probably takes the matter of the actual filling out of the application itself. It's probably a 15 to 20 minute process. I mean, you could literally be done with it if you can multitask and um, actually do it while we're, while we're going through the, the presentation here. We are gonna begin to send, sending decisions out in the middle of September. So we're less than a month away from our first admission and scholarships getting out the door, um, which is pretty typical for us. We're on a rolling admission basis. So once we begin sending those decisions, um, we'll let you know within two weeks of a completed application admissions uh, decisions about both admission and scholarship overall. Um, really quickly after that, October 1st is when the FAFSA becomes available. This gets a little bit more into the financial aid end of it, um, but it's definitely uh, an important date within the timeline. Um, we encourage students to apply with the FAFSA as early as possible after October 1st. And then we have our first financial aid offers out typically at the beginning of November. So what our goal is, is to get into the students and families, into your hands, as much information as possible, as early in the process as possible. So um, as you're going through this college search, you can have an, as, make an informed decision whenever you're ready to make that decision. With that being said, you still have up until May 1st to kind of make that final decision. And that's something, it's really gonna fall into the student's comfort level. Um, we work with students all the time. Once they have their acceptance, once they have their financial aid offers in November, they've done campus visits and they're, they're ready to make a decision, which is absolutely fine. For other students, that decision is not gonna be made until May 1st, which is absolutely fine too. But it's really, for students, it really comes down to your comfort level. Um, and it's not gonna be the same as necessarily as your best friends or as your classmates. Um, but once you've done your due diligence, once you've been engaged in this process, you'll know when the decision's right. So continue to stay engaged and anytime between that financial aid offer and May 1st is when, is when you wanna look at the timeline for making that decision. Um, for us, after May 1st, we do a summer orientation program in June. And then um, we actually just moved in uh, this past weekend for, for classes and classes started yesterday on campus, which is a little bit early due to COVID for us, but um, that's the timeline that we're working with uh, this year. So for the application, literally the only two things that um, we need the, for the application is the application itself and high school transcripts. Um, we do not have an application fee. Um, we have optional materials that include the personal statement, your test scores or letters of recommendation. Um, but really we only need the application and your high school transcripts if you decide to go test optional. I mentioned the Common App and the Ripon application are out there and available to submit for the application. As far as the high school transcripts go, most high schools will have um, a service that they'll send their transcripts to us through. Um, we also accept PDFs of transcripts. Um, if you take a picture of your transcript with all the complete information on it, send that to us. Um, we can accept that for admission as well. So again, we're trying to make it as easy as possible with getting as much information as possible in there too. Um, 
the average student coming in, just to give you some ideas of an average student coming in to Ripon, has about a 3.4 GPA, a 24 ACT, and 1149 SAT. Now those are averages. We don't have any black cutoff lines that we say you absolutely need this GPA or this test score to get in. While we don't have a lot of requirements for our application, we want to get to know students through their applications. Um, one of the ways we do that is through some of those optional things that I had on the last slide. You can include a personal statement. If you have a compelling story that you'd like to tell, please include a, include a personal statement. Um, letters of recommendation from teachers, from counselors can be very helpful. We are test optional, as I mentioned, and I think there's a lot of confusion and um, this year especially, it's important to know what test optional means because even more schools across the country are going test optional. And basically what that means for us, for Ripon, and when, when you're looking at schools, you should know what each school means by test optional because not all policies are consistent. So for us, uh, going test optional does not hurt students at all for, for admission or for scholarship. So for our students, um, for some schools, if you go test optional, you're gonna lessen your scholarship opportunities. That's not the case for Ripon at all. If you feel that your high school transcript is a better indicator of your academic performance, absolutely go test optional um, rather than your test score. There is literally one question on the application that just asks if you wanna submit your test scores or not, answer that question and we will do whatever you prefer. General rule of thumb that I tell students, and you can of course reach out to us um, and let us know if you have specific questions about your GPA versus your test score. General rule of thumb, if your GPA is at or above our average and your test score is at or below our average test score, that's a time that you wanna go test optional. Now, if you have a higher GPA in comparison to our average and a lower test score in comparison to our average, that's a good time to go test optional. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios there too, but um, please reach out and we can talk about individual circumstances with that. What are some of the other things that we look for in an application? Um, we look for students that have been very involved in high school. Um, we look for students that have done well in core college prep classes. Um, we look for students that have been trending well. Um, students that if you had a, you know, maybe had a rough junior year or sophomore year, just a rough patch, we want, we want to have that explained within your application process. Um, I think this past year, and one of the things that we're going to be working a lot with students on is the junior year, and in particular, as schools had to move online this past year, the junior year was tough. Um, and that's something, there's a question in our application about COVID and how that may have affected um, the close of your junior year. So that's something that we wanna hear about. Um, like I said, we wanna to get to know you through these applications. So take advantage of those opportunities whenever possible. Couple of tips for the application. Um, the application is not the time to be modest. Uh, I mentioned we, we're gonna look for things that, um, we're gonna look for things that you've done, things that you've been involved with. Students that have been really involved in high school um, tend to be attracted to Ripon because they can be involved in a lot of the same things and they can have a similar experience. Those students tend to do well. You have great time management skills. So that's something, um, sometimes when I ask students, they kind of give me a look, oh, I'm not really involved in a whole lot. And then I have to actually look at a parent and say, well, what are they involved in? And then they start to list off student council and, um, key club and just all kinds of different stuff. Don't be modest in your application. There's a space for activities, list your activities, whether they be um, things that you do in school, things that you do in the community, work that you do outside uh, of school. Those are all things that are really important in the application process. Second, explain any extenuating circumstances. I mentioned there's a few different opportunities, whether it be through personal statements or different places in um, the application that there may be a blip on your transcripts, you know, something that um, was happening outside of school that affected your grades overall. We want to know about that. Um, we, like I've said a couple times now, we want to get to know you through the process. That's something that's really important to us. We want to make sure that when we go to our admission or scholarship committee, 
that we're making a good match overall. Um, and those types of stories and those types of details can really help us to be able to do that. Um, applying sooner than later. It's out there now, absolutely go out and do it. Um, your senior years are gonna be busy, believe me. They're gonna be very busy and uh, time's gonna fly. Uh, so it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, like I mentioned, our timeline, you still have until May to make your final decision. Before things get too busy, get out there, apply, put the ball in our court so that we can start to get information to you. Um, once you've done that, we'll, we'll get everything to you after that. Then the hard work's done. Um, we'll certainly keep you updated, but um, I would do it sooner than later. Uh, personally, I work off the of deadlines. Give yourself a deadline, whatever deadline that works for you. Um, our priority deadline's not until a little bit later in the, in the fall early winter, but I would work off a deadline that's much earlier than that and not let your senior year kind of slip away. And then lastly, you're doing it already, being engaged. Be engaged in the process. This isn't necessarily as much an application tip as a tip is a tip overall. Just be engaged in the process and if you do that, you're going to find the right fit. After the application, as I mentioned, we go right into affordability with the FAFSA. Um, 100% of our students receive financial aid. And then uh, the other nice thing about our application, our application for admissions, is the same for our application for scholarship. So once you're applying, you're applying for everything. Um, and another good reason not to be modest within your application, because we're gonna look at you for scholarships too. Our scholarships overall on campus, they range from 20,000 to $36,000 annually. Um, like I said, you'll be notified of those at the same time of, of admission. We also have additional awards that include um, Boys and Girls States, Diversity, Legacy, ROTC, things like that that we'll review at the time of application as well. So we'll pick out any of those things in your application that you may qualify for. The FAFSA overall, I mentioned filing begins on October 1st. It's gonna look for prior prior year information. So you're gonna be enrolling, for those of you that are gonna be enrolling of uh, fall of 2021, they're gonna look for 2019 tax information from you and your family. Um, there is Rippin's code overall. There's a data retrieval tool um, within the FAFSA and basically how it works is you submit everything to the FAFSA. FAFSA sends us your results. Um, which includes your expected your EFC, your expected family contribution. And then that's the number that we use to determine your financial need overall. And then we'll build a financial aid offer off of that. The FAFSA is the one form that we require. We don't have any additional forms outside of the FAFSA that is required. So um, one thing that you can do at any time prior to October 1st is that both the students and a parent will need an FSA ID, which is your signature on the FAFSA. That can be applied for at any time. That's probably one of the single things that I see hold up the most in terms of FAFSAs and financial, aid, uh, financial offers being sent is the fact that um, students or parents don't have that FSA ID. So that's a good thing to keep in mind when you get to that part of this process. And Lee, I'll just, I'll just quick add too that if you want more information on the FAFSA, we do have a session like this on September 30th. Uh, to look more at questions and answers for the financial aid. The department will be on that call. So just kind of watch for that if you want more information. Nice little plug, Jill, for sure. all of the sessions coming up. <laughs> all right, rounding out here, and I failed to mention, Jill's going to have some a uh, little trivia here at the towards the end. We're going to have some time for questions, but then also a trivia where there's prizes to see if you're paying attention or not. So, um, But rounding out the experience here, um, visit opportunities. Uh, definitely a little bit different this year than um, what we experienced in past years. And we, of course, for us, um, you know, I mentioned with Rippin, it's all about the students and the relationships. And um, we do have on-campus visits. They're limited at this point. So um, we have four different slots where we're inviting one family at a time for our on-campus visits. Um, so if you are able and would like to visit, visit us on campus, feel free to, to look at our visit, cam, uh, visit calendar. I think Hannah's gonna throw the, the link out there to that. Um, but another really good opportunity, I know we have a number of people that are visiting us from out of state. 
Um, our virtual visits, um, probably one of the good things that's come out of COVID actually is that um, we've gotten phenomenal feedback on virtual visits and what we're able to, to show and have um, actually current students interact with prospective students and families on virtual visits from across the country. So that's a really great opportunity. If that would be something of interest to you, um, we do a quick introduction with uh, a counseling staff member, um, but then really you spend the better almost an hour with one of our current students on campus. And they walk you through um, a slideshow that has a number of the different buildings across campus, can give you a great introduction. And during these times, it's a, it's a great way to, to be engaged and to take a closer look at campus. So um, by visiting campus, and we're hoping that next semester um, in particular, we'll have some more visit, campus visit opportunities that will become available. But by vi visiting campus, it's one of the best ways to get engaged and to help to make that informed decision that I was talking about earlier. Um, the last thing I'll mention is that we actually have a team on campus today. Um, we have a new virtual tour that's available on our website too. So there's currently a virtual tour that's out there. Um, the, the team that worked on that, there's a team doing filming and recording on campus today that's going to be upgraded here in the next couple of weeks. So um, we're really excited about the virtual tour that we're able to offer. And there's 21 different locations across campus that you can kind of stop and, and hear a little bit about each of them and get a little sense of what campus is like as well. So with that, I want to open it up to see because I know everyone is saving their questions to the end. I want to see what questions you may have. They're being quiet and shy. <laughs> I did answer a couple of like yes, really specific questions in the chat. Um, but if anybody else has questions, please let us know. This is really for you guys so that you feel ready as you continue on in your college search. And this, this can really be questions about anything, anything that I just covered, or if you have specific questions about um, majors, programs, mm -hmm. athletics, um, anything across campus, I'm happy to to address, we don't want you leaving today with uh, any unanswered questions, I guess. I, Lee, I have a question in the q and I'm gonna read to you. Um, what do you believe are the real advantages of attending a small school? So many in my high school class are looking at big schools. I think the real advantage, there's two really distinct ones that, that come to mind. Um, for me. And one is inside the classroom and the other is outside the classroom. Um, obviously inside the classroom, the distinct advantage is you build that relationship with faculty members. Um, faculty can really help, depending on the field that you want to go into, they can really help you with internships, they can help you with research, they can get to know you as an individual. And I think that's something that our students experience and they know coming into Ripon is really good because that's what we're all about. But then as alums come back and when they talk about their experiences and whatever they've gone on to do and be successful, they really reflect back on that actually it's really different at Ripon than anywhere else too. Even schools that are a little bit bigger than us, um, that they find the relationships that they built here because of our size and because of the people that are here is better than, than most of their peers experience anywhere else. Um, the other piece to it that I'll say outside the classroom, you can be involved. Um, you can, if you're passionate about things, if you want to become passionate about things, you can get involved outside the classroom because of our size overall. Now we'll have students that'll come in as first years and they'll create student organizations on campus because they can. They have, they're interested in something, they want to create it because we don't have it, they can. They can take on leadership roles in bigger organizations as a sophomore or junior. They can be president of an organization. That provides invaluable experience outside of the classroom for our students that you just can't get at a much larger university. Um, and then the, the last thing I'll just add to it is I, I talk to students a lot about the fact that 
if you're on the path, if you have aspirations to go on to graduate school or go on to professional school, look at having the best of both worlds. And you can do the small classes, the personal attention that you can have at Ripon as an undergrad. And if you want, if you have aspirations to go on, because we're in Big Ten country, I'll just, I call it the Big Ten experience. You can go on and have that Big Ten experience at uh, a UW-Madison, a University of Michigan, um, where everything that that, in, that that entails. And then at that point, you have a little bit more access to faculty and a graduate program and stuff like that too. So it's really the, the best of both worlds in that case. All right, Lee, we've got another one in the question and answer. What yes. is public transportation like in between cities in the area? In between cities in the area, um, we have, well, particularly transportation to, like to and from airports in major cities, Milwaukee, Appleton, Chicago during breaks, um, our student activity office does a very good job of. If you look at transportation between Ripon and other smaller cities in the area during just um, regular class times, there's not a lot of public transportation that goes in between the two. Um, I would say that it's roughly about half of the students on campus have cars on campus. So a lot of the transportation that happens if a student, if you're familiar with the Ripon area at all, there's um, Oshkosh and Fond du Lac are both about 20 minutes away. There are larger cities um, closer to Ripon that um, students will go to and travel together just with friends. Um, so during break times, our student activities office does a good job of arranging transportation for students that are that need to get to airports or get to major cities that are farther away. Um, and then a lot of it happens organically for the current students during class times. Yes. From personal experience as an alum, I was on campus for four years without a car. So um, it is it is possible to still get around and, and do things without one. I knew y'all had a couple of good questions in there. Mm -hmm. How about a few more? I also want to be mindful of time and know that Jill has the, the quick trivia that she wants to do. Um, as I mentioned, you know, please continue to be engaged in the process. Um, You'll receive, throughout the process, you'll receive a lot of emails from me. You'll see my name uh, quite a bit. So if there's something that comes up, feel free to reply and I'll be happy to, to get back to you on them. Um, the same goes for the rest of the counseling staff. We're really here to help you through this process and um, to make it as easy as possible. And, and that's what we enjoy doing the most is, is working with families. So um, please continue to reach out, to stay engaged and we would, welcome you all to, to visit us on campus and um, hopefully in the, in the near future. So with that, I will uh, turn it back over to Jill and we'll go through the, the trivia and some prizes. Wonderful. We have just 10 questions to see if you're paying attention. So with, we're going to do it on Kahoot. I'm not sure if you are familiar. I'm going to share my screen. Um, here we go. So you should see where it has the www.kahoot.it if you want to use your phone or whatnot to get onto that app. And then you'll enter in the game pin number and you'll be able to play along with us. I'll give you folks a minute to do that. I can promise some good ripping gear prizes. So We have Evan 
and Red Hawk. <laughs> I like it, Eli. Let's see. We've got some pretty good prizes. I would, I would definitely I participate. <laughs> Jess or Stella, if you're able to join us, you're still trying. That's cool. I'm okay. sorry, Miss Lynn, as well. If you want to join us, I don't know who's Red Hawk, so, <laughs> but I like the name. Okay. Hmm? I think we're, oh, oh, I was gonna say, I think we're all. Everybody in that's gonna be in. <laughs> well, if anybody in chat, does anybody mention anything in chat, Hannah? Yeah. Any, yep. A couple of people only have one device with them. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll play it. You can write your answers down and we'll figure out a way to award some prizes. So um, we are going to go ahead and start. And again, these are all based on uh, what we just learned. So they should be relatively, I hope, easy enough. Uh, the application fee for Ripon College is the first question. It's free, $25, $500, or priceless. And I think we have everybody in, so I'm going to go ahead, let's see once. I just have to wait for the timer to go down on that. Okay, and we have two folks saying yes, you are correct. Good job. And we'll go on to the next. So I do have a few players in there, which is great. What's the name of our curriculum? Is it incitement, catalyst, synergist, or university? There's a hint sort of in the picture, so if you kind of <laughs> pay attention to what, what it is. Yeah, cat for catalyst, get it? Um, great, we're all good on that one. The next question, and we had some movement there, wonderful. Again, this is a uh, Kahoot, if you don't know, is the answer is correct and the fastest. So be very quick. Here's a true false question. 25% of our students are involved with athletes, athletics, sorry. Great, and the answer is false because it's 50% basically of our students are varsity, athletic, or varsity athletes. On to the next, Evan is in the lead. Quiz number four, the FAFSA is available when? December, January, October, November. It is October 1st, and remember, it's September 30th, we have our Hawk Talk on financial aid process. If you have any questions, you can join that. On to the next, we have Evan is still in the lead. True, false question. 100% of students at Ripon receive financial aid. There we go, that is true, 100%. Evan is still holding the lead. We have a few questions to go. Which of the following is true of Ripon College? We offer 33 majors. The student faculty ratio is 14 to one. All of our programs are direct entry or all of the above. And it's all of the above. Where are we at with the scores remain the same? It looks like Evan's still in the lead. Ripping College was established in what year? Now, I can't remember if that was in our, our slideshow, Lee. Was that in there? 
Should have been. <laughs> Correct, 1851. We know at least 19 years because Lee's been there for 19 years, right? <laughs> the next question. All right, true or false? The Catalyst curriculum requirement is 20 credits. And that is true, 20 credits equals five classes over the course of two and a half years. So very easy to meet those requirements. Next question. If you're unsure what you want to major in at Ripon, we call that wavering, multi-interested, undecided, or clueless. <laughs> Good job, uh, multi-interested is correct. And on to the last question, true or false. Academic scholarships at Ripon range from $20,000 to $36,000. Two and two, we have it's true. So that's the range for all scholarships. And again, you'll be reward, awarded that upon admission. So now we've got our winners here. Ellen is in third. Eli, first, second, and Evan, I bet. Is <laughs> number one. Great. So Eli, Evan, and Ellen, if you would please in the chat function, I'm going to stop my sharing. Good job, everybody. I'm playing that. For those of you who um, didn't get to actually play on that, we will still get a shirt for you. Um, if you would all please put in um, a size for your uh, uh, what I want to say, your size that you need for a short, and we will get that out to you shortly. Um, again, Eli, Evan, and Ellen, for sure, we'll have something for you, but all participants, we do want to send you a Ripon t-shirt. So Evan, we've got, if the rest of you want to do that, then I can get those out to you. Stella, a small. Eli, medium. Okay. And let's see, do I have Evan's size? Sorry, Evan is the adult medium. I got that. Okay. I think I have everybody. If I don't, please let me know right now if I don't have you. Um, okay, great. So, I appreciate y'all hanging on. Jess, are you still there? I'm going to let you uh, talk for a sec. Jess, are you there? Okay. I don't know what happened to Jess. All right. So I will get shirts out. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We would look forward to seeing your applications coming through. And as Lisa, we will begin reading those apps as soon as they are complete, because we are now in our reading uh, mode of getting applications for 2021. Again, watch your emails for further uh, Hawk Talks this fall. Again, we have one on September 10th and we have one on September 30th and we will plan more as the fall goes on. I appreciate you taking the time. Anything further from you, Lee, in passing and ending our call today? No, nope. thanks everyone for taking the time and uh, we'll look forward to talking again in the future. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye.